We hear a great deal about love in the readings today. St. John, in his letter, tells us that God is love, which gives us insight into the very heart of who God is, not simply what he does, which is what we so often focus on in Lent and Easter, but who he truly is, a Trinitarian communion, love which is God. Jesus in the Gospel then shows how this love is given to us, that he loved us so much that he came from the Father, that we could be part of that communion, that we could love him like he loves the Father. That is radical. To say that we could love like God, which is something utterly impossible for any one of us, that is what Jesus offers us. By his own power as God, he can make it happen. And that is the promise offered to us in this Easter season especially, when the sacraments are poured out upon us and we are given grace from on high in a new way, so that we can remain not only part of this world, but part of the very love of God. That's what so many of the saints say about the Incarnation. He became like us so that we can become like Him. That's incredible almost. How can we believe that, that we can become like God unless He is the one to do it? Jesus then says that this love will have particular effects in, his, in our lives, specifically that we will keep his commandments, that we will act in certain ways and not in others. This goes to the early church in a, a letter of Diognetus, when he is saying, Christians are in the world, but they act so differently from those in the world. They wear the same clothes, they go to the same markets, but they are like the soul of the world. That is what we are meant to be. By the love of God, when we go from this place, strengthened by what we do here, we are meant to give life to this world because of Christ who lives within us. By keeping his commandments, we show that he is in us and that we are following him. This means the commandments are not simply suggestions or things to be left aside, but things to which we hold assiduously with all our body, mind, soul, and strength. Because by doing so, we remain in him. Jesus then takes this even further. He says, no one has greater love than to lay down his life for his friends, which is exactly what he did upon the cross. Then he says, you are my friends if you do this, if you do the things that I have commanded you. This is also shocking. Not only are we his children, but he wants us to be his very dear friends. You can know from any friendship in your life how much of a support that is, how helpful and how necessary the Greeks and the saints have even said that life without friendship is not worth it. Nobody would want that because we are meant to be part of community. We are meant to have communion in our life, that love between persons which helps us to go out of ourselves, to grow in virtue. This is why Jesus continues by saying, I do not call you slaves, but friends. When we are slaves to sin, we are enemies of God. We separate ourselves from all the good that he wants for us. Just as we heard last week, we become part of the vine that is pruned and cut off from life when we stay in sin, when we do not keep the commandments. But what Jesus is offering us today is friendship with him, intimate, divine communion, friendship with God. He is saying, do not be slaves to sin, to this world, to your passions, but come to me and remain with me. Be a friend of God. This particular line, as we are examining the sacraments this Easter season, made me think of the two sacraments of healing, confession and anointing of the sick. In both of these, we find healing for our sins in various ways in our life, either in confession, those that we have committed, or in anointing, healing from the effects of the sins, so that we can stay with God even in the most difficult parts of our life, so that we are not slaves to sin, and we once again enter into that communion and friendship with God. You'll notice one of the first things that happens after the original sin of Adam and Eve is the word enmity, absolute opposition to God. But what Jesus comes to bring us is a removal of that enmity so that we can remain in him, in his love. That's all what happens in the sacrament of confession. 
enmity is taken away, whether it's between us and God, us and ourselves, us and the world, or other people. We are meant to be friends with them, not with sin, not with the forces of evil, but with God and his people. And confession helps us to do that by strengthening our hearts and by giving us grace to remain in that grace. I've been noticing more and more lately in secular articles, in writings of the saints and writings of modern prophets of our own time, how heavily loneliness and suffering weigh upon people's hearts, especially since the pandemic. It may seem odd, but confession is part of a remedy to that loneliness, to that suffering of being alone in this world, because it, rem it unites us in the communion with God, the saints, and the whole church. And it removes the sin from our life that keeps us at bay from everyone that we love. This then, in the anointing of the sick, is taken to the extremes. When we are in suffering, in sickness, or on our deathbed, even there God says, I want you to be my friend. I want you to be part of my family, part of my communion of love. And so he gives us this sacrament so that even then we are not slaves. Even then we can have hope of remaining in active. It's made part of the cross, so that even in those moments, like we see in the book of Job, that can push us to our end, mentally, physically, or spiritually, we can realize we are not alone there. We are with Christ. We are with our friend, because he has come to be with us in our agony, in our dying, in our suffering, and in our sickness. That is the beauty of what he offers us today. And that's not just for the extremes of our life. He comes to us right now in the Blessed Sacrament, saying, I am here with you as your friend, as someone you can be with. Now, that's important to remember. A good friendship will only stay good if time is spent with the friend. And if that friendship calls each person to higher heights of virtue, to the goodness of, go of the gospel, any friendship which takes us away from God or from, the, or from virtue is not a friendship at all. But that means for us that we have to spend time with him, here in this church, in a chapel, in adoration with the scriptures, with his church. That means we have to take time out of our lives, no matter how busy, to be with him, to talk to him, to give him our hearts, because he is the friend who can actually help us in every situation, particularly in this context, to get away from sin and remain in his commandments, remaining in his love by that act. So today, consider in your life where you are not friends with God, even in some small way, some small sin. Pray for the grace to overcome that by his love. And especially consider this week how you might help those who are struggling, whether it be with sin or some sort of separation or loneliness, to extend to them the friendship of God. Maybe that's by visiting someone that's sick or ill or dying, or someone which is that of Christ himself living in all of us. In this way, slowly, the community of our parish, of our church, can grow. It will be strengthened by God's own love, and we can come closer to him here in this Eucharist and one day forever in heaven.